So welcome to the podcast, Maria. Hey, thank or you. Or Dr. So Maria, should I say? Oh, yeah, no, Maria is <laughs> just fine. <laughs> okay. So I'm um, so happy to have you on. Um, your story is really inspiring. I'm really excited for you to share it. I'm sure a lot of listeners are probably already listening to your podcast, but for those who don't know much about you, can you share your journey, how it's inspired you to get into fertility counseling and specialize in fertility, and also share your inspiring message? Oh, how much time do we have? <laughs> I know. That's always, a, that's always the question I get. <laughs> we have time. Go for it. Okay, good. Yeah. So, yeah, my, my journey was, as most people's journey, is quite unexpected, right? Um, I thought that once we stopped taking birth control pills, we would be pregnant, like, immediately and mm -hmm. planning to, you know, make a baby room and all this stuff. And actually, I did get pregnant that first month off of the um, birth control pills that I was on for at least a decade. Um, and then I wasn't pregnant. I was quite obsessed with taking um, pregnancy tests. And the first one was positive. And then like five more after that, I think about, they were negative. So... I went to the doc about it and he said, oh, you probably just had a chemical pregnancy. Now mm -hmm. me all these years later is like, uh, oh, that's kind of a big deal. So mm -hmm. don't brush it off. Yeah. But at that time I didn't know what, what that was about. And he told me I was going to be fine and just to keep trying. And so that's what I did. And the journey continues on and on through, um, Clomid cycles and, IUI and various tests, you know, finding endometriosis. My husband had some morphology stuff on and on until I had a breakdown, basically. Um, I completely lost my mind. Um, I feel like people believe that a therapist should know how mm -hmm. to take care of herself. I didn't, not with this trauma. It was really rough. And uh, I was, it was pretty dark. It was a pretty dark, yeah. a dark place. And I and my husband, we were not well. Um, took a complete break from fertility stuff, trying to make a baby because we were dissolving. Yeah. Wow. We were on our way out. Um, divorce on the door. Wow. On the door. So uh, we took a break and worked on our marriage. And during that time, I began to do various things to take care of myself. Um, the number one thing being meditation. Hmm. Um, and actually, I came to med. I joke about this because I came to meditation from a bitter place. Actually, um, I I didn't believe that it was going to be helpful. <laughs> at a lot all. of people don't. Yeah, I did. I I went I went to it with sarcasm. Like, please. Yeah, fine. Fine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Ohm. <You know? laughs> but I am a researcher. I like, you know, come from a from a family on my dad's side of German engineers, right? It's like one plus one always equals two. Right. So this research uh specifically of mindfulness based stress reduction mm -hmm. out of UMass, I believe, um, showed that meditation at the very least could help reduce my stress. And I was absolutely, of course, like most people on this journey beyond stressed. I mean, I don't know that there's a it's traumatic true gauge for that. Yes. Unbelievably. So um, I went into meditation to prove the research wrong because <laughs> that's where my yeah. head was. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just I had nothing else on my agenda. I had done all the things. I had done all the doctor Googling. I had, you know, taken all the supplements. I had, I stopped at like a vaginal steam routine. That was, <laughs> <me, but. laughs> <laughs> I did all the other things. Um, and I, I just decided to, why not? I'll try this one. So um, I gave it 90 days and I said, all right, I'm going to make a concerted effort to do this, especially if it's going to help, you know, save our marriage. Okay. I'll try mm -hmm. this. 
And after um, about 30 days, I was like, this is annoying and I hate it, but I feel a little bit different, mm. just a little bit different. Um, I, I couldn't stand meditation. I went into it kicking and screaming. My thoughts were like ping, 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 right, telling me how terrible I was, telling me how the world sucked, telling me all these painful things. So how um, long, um, just to pause, because I was curious, yeah. how long of a meditation practice and how did you implement this just for the listeners? I did 30 minutes. I started smaller, like five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then after about two weeks, I was at 30 minutes a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, not every day. It was mm -hmm. probably around five days a week. Mm -hmm. um, and then after about 90 days is when I, I don't even know how to explain the opening up that happened. Mm. Everything was beautiful. Wow. Everything was magical. Everything I just got the chills. was a miracle. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I would see one of my favorite scenes that's still in my head is sitting on my patio with watching the lavender um, bushes there and there were just bumblebees all around them. That I, I was just intrigued. Well, you have lavender bushes? I did. That was back that's then. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. I want some more. Yeah. Um, but I remember that so clearly because it just, I saw things so differently. I don't know if, if folks know this, but depression can actually make colors seem dimmer or duller. Wow. I did not know that. That's fascinating. Yeah. And I realized I was no longer depressed because I could see bright purples and bright reds and oranges again. I could That's see amazing. bright beautiful colors again. And I just noticed smells more. I, all of my senses were heightened and everything was gorgeous. Probably the most important thing, uh, well, two of the most important things, A, I didn't need my husband to be any different than who he was. Hmm. He was fine the way he was. I no longer expected him to do, take the supplements, to do the detox, to do, you know, I didn't expect yeah. any of that. That's amazing. I just allowed him to be who he was and I loved him regardless of his, his flaws. Um, I also allowed him to love me despite my flaws. I was so judgy of myself mm -hmm. um, and that reflected on my, you know, projected it out to him, judging him. But the other thing was the fertility thing the, my fertility struggles became like, oh my God, this is, this is why I needed to experience that. Mm. I needed to experience that because I was not being in my life. I was being in some future life all the time. Must have, must have, must get, must have, must have, I must do this. I have to do this. I have to do that. Or my life won't be perfect. Blah, 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 blah. Frantically searching for the next thing. And when infertility came, that's not how it works, right? Mm -hmm. Making a baby is not like that. It's not following a series of steps and then reaching the end guaranteed. Right. Um, and I realized that I needed to be present in the moment, seeing the beauty everywhere. It was just mm -hmm. all around me all the time. So long story short, uh, I came to a place where I had effectively felt healed and we, we still had some embryos on ice and this is I from before. This is from my first, IV, my very first IVF cycle. Mm -hmm. They had been in storage because we were working on our marriage and not why I bring a baby into that. Yeah. But once we felt solid again, um, we were ready to move to another, to, to take care of those embryos and, and do a final cycle, just one more. Mm -hmm. And again, these embryos were made from my very first cycle. It was very traumatic, very difficult time for us. Uh, and it's the only time that I got pregnant on this IVF mm -hmm. art journey. Um, unfortunately, the, the pregnancy didn't last, mm -hmm. but very different than in the past. Mm -hmm. I grieved for a day. Mm -hmm. I grieved for one day. 
Mm. And then I was like, back to life is beautiful. Like life is amazing. It's, pre it's precisely as it needs to be. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. I love this life and I'm good in it. Mm. Um, so we live, we decided to live child-free. Uh, well, my husband did for two weeks before he was like, no, I need to be a dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, it's all zen out. So I'm like, no problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we decided to pursue adoption and I won't get into the details of that story, but boy, that's miraculous. Wow. I just got the chills again. <laughs> yeah. How he came to us is unreal. I, just, just a whole giant level of manifesting that I, <laughs> I explain it all in my book. So read that, but it's like mm -hmm. astounding. Um, and now we're the parents of, of two little boys adopted from mm -hmm. South Korea. Mm. And um, I can't stop sharing the wisdom for my fertility yeah. journey. And that's why I do what I do. I do counseling, but honestly, I, I really feel like coaching, fertility coaching and spirit baby work is, mm. is where my heart is. Yeah. And, and helping folks tap into that, tap into... Um, intuition, tapping into the strengths that they have, tapping into the beauty that's all around them. Not that that doesn't happen in counseling, but it's just a different flavor. Yeah. Like that is where it's at. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's more spiritual. It's more in depth and, and intricate and um, yeah. subtle almost and etheric. And yeah, I love it. Yes. So yeah, I can get clinical, you know, I can talk about biochemistry and I can talk about, you know, cognitive behavioral things and mm -hmm. it's fine it's useful yeah I just don't think it's everything no it's uh, not so, I agree with you on that yeah so um yeah that's where that's where our journey that's how our journey led me to do what I do I can't stop I have to continue spreading what I learned yeah amazing I I find your story to be so inspiring and I'll tell you, a lot of people, as you know, starting the fertility journey are like, no, I, adoption, I'm, I don't want, I want to have my own child and they have their own method of how it's going to play out. Uh, right. But I've heard many stories and, and they end in so many different ways, um, mm -hmm. some of which were saying that their adoptive child was the one that was chose them like it's it's kind That's of right. like this and so and then i actually just recently had an intuitive on and she was talking about the spirit of the child picking mm -hmm. the parents and some of those spirits are adopted or That's it's going right. to be an adoptive child so yeah. talk about that i i just find it so fascinating and it just expands the consciousness it expands our because we we do tend as humans just normally our human mind tends to keep ourselves in a box that's right and it's yeah. like this checklist of exactly how to control life and it's interesting that you said even with your husband you stopped trying to control it you know mm -hmm. his behavior you allowed it to it's it's kind of like this beautiful surrender to allowing life to manifest as it wants to yes not even kind of that's exactly it yeah Rendering. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, in the um, adoption world, there's a, and I don't remember exactly how it goes, but there's a, um, an idea called the red thread mm -hmm. that there is an invisible red thread that connects souls to souls, souls who are supposed to be in one another's lives. Mm -hmm. And it's particularly red thread. Oh my God. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's particularly important in the adoption world because we we think about, oh, but this is not biology. This baby isn't coming through my body, but souls don't care. <laughs> yeah. Spirit, they don't care. Where, right. They are already tied to you through this red thread. Where, no matter where on the planet they are, they are born, they're still connected to you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when I, um, when I talk to parents um, about their spirit babies, Occasionally that will come through, like um, I'm coming to you through another. And often it's, it's immediately rejected. Uh, no, that can't be. No, we're not using any donor gametes. No, mm -hmm. we're not using gestational carrier. No, we're not adopting. No, 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 must be mine. 
Mm -hmm. No matter what, they're all yours. (laughs) No Mm -hmm. matter what. Yeah. Our son's completely ours. Um, Babies born with other gametes, they're still yours. They're connected to you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, And you can feel it. You can feel it too. That's one thing I need to highlight for people is that there's a knowing. There's just a knowing that Mm -hmm. they were, that they're yours. And it's not something you can put into words. You just feel it. Absolutely. I mean, how many of us can say that we have certain family members that are like, who are you? And then we meet friends that are like, I've known you for eons and eons. I just know it. Yes. And, and you're my family and you're my tribe. Yeah. How do you explain that? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. You know that that person's family, mm-hmm. regardless of biology. Yeah. And some family members who have your biology, you're like, who the heck are you? <laughs> like, why are you in my life? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's totally true. So like, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's just so fascinating. So at what point did you know, okay, let me go through this. Or at what point did you have that knowing? The one that he was my son or the fact that. Yeah. The fact that you decided to adopt. I mean, it was a a clear calling. Yeah. Well, so for us, it was my husband say, I was like, honestly, very truly, I was fantastic with whatever happened with whatever yeah. transpired. I was planning vacations. I was thinking about having like six dogs. I was great. I, and I went out and looked for lavender and grew mm-hmm. my vegetables. And I was just loving life. And when my husband said, I really, I really need to be a dad, I was like, cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's move to adoption then. Um, so for, for me specifically, it wasn't this, um, obvious next move. Mm-hmm. I was just really great being here now. Yeah. I was just like going with, going with the flow. Um, and so, and the same thing through the adoption process, that is not an easy process. It does feel like starting completely over again Yeah, from the beginning. We had already dealt with six and a half years of fertility struggles. So to start, you know, quote over again, mm-hmm. um, was, was hard. Absolutely. The difference was, that because I had already done all of this work, the hard moments, they passed right through me. I felt them and it sucked, Mm -hmm. but they just, they just kept going. They went through me and then kept going rather than the dark fertility world where I was just churning in it. I call it fear when you're sitting in a bunch of fear chemicals. (laughs) Yeah, totally. That's a great, that's a great way to put it. Yeah. You know, I love um, the fact that you call it post-traumatic growth Yeah. Yes. versus post-traumatic, post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes. Yeah. Right. That's, and they're not mutually exclusive. So you can experience both at the same time. So post-traumatic growth is actually a clinical, it's, it's a scientific fact that it mm-hmm. happens. Post-traumatic growth is when you are able to recognize positive changes in you because of a trauma. And because I experienced that sort of spontaneous joy after the meditation for 90 days, I was curious because that's my brain. Mm -hmm. uh, Why? Why did that happen? And so when I did my doctoral research, I I actually wanted to research uh, mindfulness and fertility, and I got fixated on that. They're mm-hmm. like, no, 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 you can't do that. Now, of course, people do all kinds of mindfulness research, but not right. Yet. Alice Damar has a ton of stuff on. Yeah, fun. Yeah. Now, now they'll they would have approved it, but back then, no. Mm-hmm. So instead, I found this um, concept of post traumatic growth, and I when I found it, I knew that is what I experienced. Mm. Oh my God. And then I wanted to know why, why did I experience that? Why not everybody? Because people, even after bringing home a baby or adopting a child, right. You'll tra- still traumatize. Yep. They're not healed. Yeah. And they think that they would be right, but they're not. It's true. So yeah. Now you can experience the, the post-traumatic stress still. Um, but the, they can exist at the same time. So you mm-hmm. notice very um, 
positive things that happen because of the experience, but you're still like hyper vigilant, you know? So like seeing a pregnant person walk by still triggers you a little bit, but mm -hmm. you can imagine, or you can still feel more compassion for them or compassion for yourself for having that reaction in the first place. So mm -hmm. they can both exist. Yeah. Absolutely. And so why do you think that, um, I guess because of the meditation that you were able to grow from it, because not everybody's able to get to that place of no. growth. No, no. Yeah. So my specific research was on personality factors and um, post-traumatic growth. So um, I can speak to that. Mm -hmm. People who are, who are um, interestingly, people who are extroverted are more likely to experience post-traumatic growth. I am not extroverted. I'm mm -hmm. quite introverted. Mm -hmm. And yet I still experience that. So this isn't end all be all. Right. But I think the most strong personality characteristic was um, openness to experience. Mm, so that I love that. Means, yeah. So that just means you're very open to see, like you're curious, mm -hmm. what's going to come my way? What's on its way to me? And that is actually a really um, to go into the the more spiritual realm, that's a, a way to be that helps create manifestations in your life, right? Just like, okay, I'm putting this idea out there. I'm getting curious. Let's see what comes mm -hmm. my way. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, for me though, I didn't know at the time that my openness to experience was a thing. I didn't know if I were more extroverted that I would experience post-traumatic growth. I literally was just being in a moment. And there were, there are other things that I changed too. So I um, stopped beating myself up. I was much more loving, much more compassionate toward myself. And then that ended up that, you know, I was more compassionate and loving to other people. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped. Right. It's a mirror, isn't it? Yes, totally. That's right. Um, it all starts within. Um, I stopped making fertility stuff, everything. Um, it, it was everything, every mm -hmm. other aspect of my life just went to the wayside and fertility was all that yeah. I focused on. Um, and those are just a few things that I did, but meditation is where it started. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Sure. I've been a meditator for over 20 years and it's completely, completely changed my life. I think it's such medicine. And I think that it also connects us with our divine intelligence. Oh yeah. Our birthright something that we brush over and we sometimes as a society put so much effort at this is we were talking about this earlier so much emphasis on research mm -hmm. but we forget that the research was born from our own <laughs> innate guidance right. that caused us to be curious enough or we were drawn to research so we forget the source and meditating brings us to that source it's just fabulous. I can't speak enough about it. Now, a lot of people hesitate on it. Just like you were mentioning, a lot of people hesitate starting a meditation practice yes. because it's, it's not easy to just sit down and listen to that monkey mind. It's very unnerving. Painful. <laughs> yeah, painful. It's like torture. It's like, okay, so I'm going through torture and I'm going to give myself more torture. Torture. No, thank you. Yeah. But I'll tell you, it is medicine. It really is. Once you get, once you hug the monkey, hug the monkey, <laughs> just befriend the monkey. <laughs> just befriend the monkey. Uh, I mean, certainly that's what I had to do, right? Like, I know you're trying to keep me safe, monkey. Yeah. I just don't need right now. I'm okay. Yeah. And, um, and I stopped being angry at the monkey and, and bitter and just invited the monkey in. Wild <laughs> yeah. Come on awesome. in. <laughs> You're welcome. And the monkey got bored and was like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. And then it was nice and quiet. And then you, and then you smelled the lavender and looked at the bees. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. If I, I think one personality characteristic that I can highlight is my freaking stubbornness because I said I would do it for 90 days and therefore yeah. I was doing it for 90 days. Well, I tell you, I mean, personality traits are so interesting. I, I you know what? Psychotherapy has always interested me. But what mm -hmm. I find is that actually my husband said this and he was always intrigued in it. He's a doctor, but he, he also minored in psychology. And uh -huh. he said that, um, you look at your, I guess, your challenges 
or your weakness. And sometimes your weakness can be your biggest strength. Oh, yes. Pretty Absolutely. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. And if people would let the weakness in, mm -hmm. weakness, yeah, um, they'd be able to, to see that and embrace that part of themselves. It's our, it's our greatest teacher, really. Yeah. You know, um, these struggles that we have, I think they're just guides. Mm -hmm. They're really good guides. Right. It's the, the obstacle is the way. I love that phrase. That's right. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> Look at the obstacle. Yeah. I think there's a book about it. I want to read it eventually, but um, yeah, there's a book. My growing list. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it, it, I mean, there's such truth to it. What's interesting is you were talking about personality traits um, that are connected or linked to uh, people who have post-traumatic growth. Mm -hmm. And when you said extroverted, I'm not sure if it's necessarily being extroverted, but probably extroverted people have courage to do things. Sure. And so maybe it's more the courage, and it just so happens to be that you'll see it in a lot of extra extroverted people, but introverted people have that too when they're ready to. <laughs> sure, and certainly, oh no, see, now you're getting my research <laughs> mind. I'm like, oh, another cool study, maybe. <laughs> do it, do it. <laughs> My mind always goes there. I have that kind of mind too. <laughs> like what's underneath that person personality characteristic that would lend itself to post-traumatic growth. And mm -hmm. man, do we need courage. We do to face that, to face that obstacle. And it's a, it feels like it's like the worst thing we want to duck. But the yeah. truth is, is that it, it's a portal really to a higher part of us, a higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it's not comfortable. It sucks. No. Nope. <laughs> oh my God. Ugh. Let yeah, exactly. Right open. Yeah. Um, but there's a book I read called Broken Open, not about fertility stuff, but oh, it's about great. that. Yeah. Have you read that? Yeah. Well, I, I've heard of it. I love um, Elizabeth Lesser. Yeah. Lesser. She's amazing. I've gone to the Omega Institute, actually. She was walking right next to us. She's, no. she's fabulous. Yeah. She's like celebrity to me. I love the Omega. Oh, she's Institute. amazing. Yeah. I just wrote about the Omega Institute today. How funny. I love it. <laughs> See, well, there's no coincidences. <laughs> Everything kind of works together in this beautiful mesh, um, which is why, again, um, we talk about adoption. It's just all meant to be everything. Yeah. There's this invisible thread, like you were saying. That's right. So I love the name Miracles Happen. Mm -hmm. It's just such a beautiful... I love miracles. I mean, just the, the concept of it, and they are real. It's just, they're rare, but I don't believe that they have to be necessarily rare. Um, yeah. Talk about that and, and your, share your inspiration on the title. It's just a beautiful. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. I'm glad you like yeah. it. I like it. Yeah. I think the miracles happen a lot, but we don't recognize them as that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll go back to the, to the inspiration for it. Interestingly enough, uh, it was, at the Omega Institute. <laughs> oh, yes. Was, See, oh that's beautiful. That's crazy. <laughs> so it was at the Omega Institute, and I was doing a training with Brian Rice, Brian Weiss, who does. That. I did a training with him too. I, I don't know if it was the yeah. same year. It was oh, a oh 2018. Um, no. I did mine. Well, so I went to the first, it was a weekend one called Miracles Happen, I think. Mm -hmm. Um. So that, I don't know what year that was. It's a different one. I did the actual training. I want to say it was 2000. I did the five year. Maybe it was 2017, no, 2018 that I went. Really? The Before. five day one? Yes. We were together. It was like May or February? No, no. It was, it was in the summer. So maybe it wasn't. Okay. No. okay. okay. What? We were like a couple of months away from <laughs> That's amazing. That is crazy. It's <laughs> really so cool. I went, I went to the the first where the inspiration came from was it was a weekend workshop, and um, he was talking about his his book called Miracles Happen, and I went, oh, that's it, mm. that's that's the name for my business, because you know you just have a feeling, because obviously people talk about babies as being miracles, right? It's an absolute miracle that babies are even conceived and born in the first place yeah. because so many moving parts. Um, and then of course in the fertility world, it's that much 
Carter. Um, but that was, that's the inspiration for the name um, and then all the background stuff. Um, and then I forget the second part of your question, the inspiration for the name and then- Yeah, the inspiration. In yeah, miracles in general. I mean, yeah, what really connected you to that? Because I just find it, it's just such a beautiful thing. And yeah, we were talking about how they happen all the time. I do believe that as well. It's just a matter of kind of tuning in. You know, what's interesting, yeah. I kind of have this philosophy that even personalities or meditation that we're like the, these antennas and we tune into different things, different frequencies. Mm -hmm. So like when I was younger, I would have a little bit more of a temper, just a little bit when I was younger. <laughs> yeah. But I used to tune into what used to upset me or I'd get offended or whatever it was. Um, my personality, I'm still who I am, but I don't, things don't get to me at all now. And I know meditations help me, but I do believe that it's because I'm tuning into a different vibration. So I even feel like personalities are not life sentences that they, that you're basically That's just true. tuned into a certain vibration. That's why you'll hang out with certain people that have mm -hmm. similar vibrations. We're just, it's just a matter of tuning in. So that if we tune into miracles, we're going to see them all the time. We're just tuning yeah. into that vibration. That's right. Yeah. And even, um, they don't talk about it this way, but the science community talks about personality changes because, you know, it used to be this idea that, you know, you're born with that personality. Yeah. You have genes with that personality. Well, um, I can go off on a tangent on genes, but I won't go there. This research about the post-traumatic growth stuff that I did, the personality folks were talking about how big events in our life, like a trauma, can mm -hmm. absolutely significantly change our personality characteristics. Mm -hmm. And in the spiritual world, we do talk about that being a vibrational change. That's mm -hmm. how it is when I connect to spirit babies. It's just a vibrational connection. It's just an alignment to a certain vibration. P.S. Meditation changes your brain waves mm -hmm. so that your the actual vibration put out there is a different. It's tuning into something different. It is. It's I think so I could talk fascinating. To you we could like. <laughs> oh, we'll. T I, I'd have you back. We'll talk about something else. I mean, I could like really have conversations with you for a long, 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 long time because I really relate to what you're saying. I think it's first of all so fascinating that you've yeah. actually studied this. Um, another thing that came to my mind: we we're just talking about meditation. You're talking about brain waves. Um, I was thinking, I just had it and it just kind of slipped out. It was about uh, vibrating to a certain energy frequency, but I don't remember. So it'll come back to me. <laughs> well, I'll comment on the miracle thing and maybe it'll come back to you. Yeah. Uh, I wrote about this in my, um, in my book. It's, the chapter is called, What If Miracles Happen? Mm -hmm. And the way that I, that I talk about it is that when you are in tune and when you are you know, vibrating on that level, that miracles don't feel like this amazing, oh my God, I can't believe that just happened. I just got chills. It really feels like, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> of course that happened. And that's how I felt when our son came home. Now, obviously I was overwhelmed in love with him, but it really was this feeling of, but that's how it's always been. Mm -hmm. Because I was in that vibration. I was in that state. That became of, your reality. Yes, it was absolutely my reality, even though he wasn't there yet. The way that he came home was absolutely a beyond, it was a completely abnormal story. And so I knew that I needed an abnormal story mm -hmm. <laughs> to happen for it to be like, oh, this works. Yeah. Oh my God. That's and amazing. it really just felt like, of course, that's how it is. So that might be a reason why people don't notice miracles as much, mm -hmm. you know, a, it could be like just discounting. Oh, that was just coincidence. Mm -hmm. Or it could be, yeah, but that's, that's, of course that happened. Mm -hmm. That's just, and I'm in line with that. Um, so the definition of miracle is just not explainable by science. Right. But we're getting closer to that. It is. Quantum. I know it's amazing. We're getting closer to explaining miracles scientifically. <laughs> yes. And so um, actually talk about how, you know, quantum physics talks a lot about how our perception can change matter and waves. Yeah, I just find cool. that so fascinating. I mean, the fact that we can change yeah. something so small, it's not, you know, we can measure it at least. 
we're basically our connection or what we see in front of us are, is totally us. Yes. Oh my gosh, you're bringing on my nerd self. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm getting it all out. I'm pulling it. <laughs> I know. So yeah, this it's all, it all starts with the double slit experiment, which is probably beyond the scope of this, but basically what the researchers found, and they still can't explain it, and quantum physicists are, you know, not in agreement, not in total agreement. They're not explaining it all the same way. They never are. <laughs> yeah, right. I yeah. mean, that's how two I different do. eyes, two different worlds, you know, set of that's sets right. of eyes, I'll say. That's right. So basically what they found in that in this research and ongoing, I mean, it's been shown over and over and over again that particles can be both um, a, a single point and a wave, which mm -hmm. means and it depends on whether or not you're looking at it or not looking at it. It also depends on what you intend for it to be and what you don't intend for it to mm -hmm. be. I know this is like speaking in a weird, that's how quantum physics is. It's just weird. Mm -hmm. But basically what you intend to happen can be drawn to you. You can, because every moment in time is possibility. It's just possibility. Everything from this moment stems out into the into the ether and what comes next is all just in the realm of possibility until you attune or mm -hmm. tune into a certain mm -hmm. possibility and make it your reality. Mm -hmm. um, quantum physics, according to some quantum physicists, is showing that that is possible. Yeah. That you tune into what you want to make your reality and you can make it happen. That's manifestation. Um, I could go off forever on that. Oh, topic. no, it's, it's absolutely amazing. You know, um, what's interesting is one of the things that I recently got into is the Ho'oponopono prayer. Have you heard of that? I have. I have. Maybe it was on your website that I saw that. It could have been. It could have been. Um, it is fascinating. I talked about it in, in, on my Instagram, and it's really just these four sayings. Um, I think, you know, it's been said in different orders, but this is how I like to say it in certain orders. You can change it, but um, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And it basically, you say this to the divine, you say this to the divine energy. And what that does is it cleans your energy. It cleans all of these fragments. And, and this, the guy that actually brought it to the general public, he it's, it's an ancient Hawaiian prayer or saying that they use, uh, they did it in different ways, but then he changed it into kind of something that you can do for yourself on your own without having to have other people involved. Oh. And he used it. He is a psychotherapist who worked at, or was assigned to a psychiatric ward of mm -hmm. murderers and people that have done heinous crimes. Mm -hmm. He just simply looked at their charts and would say, if I see them, if their charts are in front of me, there's something to do with me that I'm seeing this in my, in front of my reality. And his whole mm -hmm. thing is that do you ever notice whenever there's a problem, you're there to yes. witness it. <laughs> so he said, you, you basically, if you're witnessing it, even if it's somebody else experiencing it, mm -hmm. then there's a re then, then you have something to do with it. You take responsibility. It's a very responsible uh, perspective perspective on life rather than a blame type of thing. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. life is happening to me, um, and that we are part of what we're seeing in front of us. So he uses it to heal. So he would see these people, and this is all documented. He healed the whole ward. I know this sounds crazy. Look oh, into not it. Me. <laughs> Look into it. He healed one by one by one by one by looking at their charts and saying this prayer. And so he sees it as cleaning. So he's cleaning his shared reality with them. If he yeah. sees them and he's witness to this, that means he has a shared reality. That means he has a shared responsibility. And so he's able to clean it and do something about it from his perspective. I've been using this with my patients. Um, one just got pregnant at 43. It's just, it's pretty amazing. I have to check, check it out. I know that I've heard of it. It could have been on your website, mm -hmm. but yeah, it doesn't sound, I mean, I live in the world of the, of the weird anyway, so things don't <laughs> sound weird to me, but um, 
I believe it. And it really, it's, it goes back to a lot of what we're talking about too, that tuning into frequency and, you know, raising another's vibrations along with your own. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it makes a huge difference. Um, I love it. Now I'm going to go. It's empowering, right? I mean, it's, uh, right. it, it, it goes to show that like we have way more power than we think. Mm -hmm. We're way more, uh, <laughs> let me say it. <laughs> We're way more miraculous than we believe. Yes. Yes. We hold so much more power than we thought. And I have to tell you these, these things, because I began testing it myself. Now this is you know, anecdotal, it's my own life, but so many things have happened. So many things. I, I told somebody recently, a couple of years ago, there was a house in, in the neighborhood that we really wanted to buy. And um, it had been sitting for months. And so my husband and I, we made an offer. Well, they came back and said they declined our offer because somebody else had offered whatever, and they took their offer. And my husband was all distraught and upset. And I was like, babe, listen, you're living with me now. Remember, <laughs> mm -hmm. we just need to put it out there that in a couple of weeks, that offer is going to fall through and they're going to call us and offer us the house. Now, it doesn't mean that precise thing will happen. It means that something that, that, is, um, that causes that same emotion, that causes that same vibration will occur if we put it out there. So but he literally went to that house. It was empty. Nobody was living there. He parked his car in front of it and took a picture like he, like he lived there. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't you know, a week and a half later, the realtor called and said, Hey, are you still interested in that house? That offer fell through. Do you want to make an offer? <laughs> Would you like, believe that the same exact thing happened to the house that I'm sitting in right now? Get the heck out of here. Yep. Yes, I would it, believe it. Yeah, and, and it's right across the street from my cousin. And she told me about it um, a year before. It was way too high. And then around um, 20, I don't, you know, after 2008, it yep. was kind of everything went down. Um, so for a little while, like all the prices just went down after like a year yep. or two after. Yep. And, um, and we were able to put an offer. Somebody else outbid us. I was lost. Wow. And then, uh, but I was like, but there's something about that house. I don't believe that like we lost it. It just doesn't make sense. Like I felt it. And then what do you know? Same thing. Crazy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, this, it's yeah, exactly. if it's yours, it's yours. I think that that's really the yeah. lesson. And you can feel it too. You can feel it. The same thing uh, just briefly with our son. Um, every piece of evidence outside of me said that we were going to have to switch programs. We had to switch to the China program, but inside, inside, I'm like, no, my son is from Korea. Mm. My son is from Korea. I know it. And I would look for synchronicities outside of me that matched my son is from Korea and they kept happening. Mm -hmm. And right after we got approved, there was a call that somebody, a couple had had adopted this child and he was there for a few days and they decided not to finalize the adoption. Mm -hmm. Would we like a baby? And we had to take custody in 48 hours. Oh my God. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. And he's freaking from South Korea. Like yeah. you can't explain that away as coincidence. No, absolutely uh, not. I mean, you, you can, just but know. You're wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is true. <laughs> But it's pretty amazing because uh, you felt that calling. It's like his soul was calling you. Yes. Yeah. And I just, yeah, I knew it. I also knew that we'd have a second baby from Korea, but I didn't know how that was going to happen because Korean adoption is very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew we wouldn't be able to afford that. It's like $45,000 or something. Wow. And the way that our second son came is also a miraculous story. It's, it just keeps happening non-fertility related, we, we moved from New Jersey to Oregon and we didn't have, I, I was a therapist in New Jersey. So, and I couldn't take my clients with me. Right. Mm -hmm. Except now you can do on. Right. True. But yeah, back then fewer people did online stuff. So I had to find an actual, like working for somebody else job. I didn't have a job. My husband didn't have a job. We didn't have a place to live, but we packed all of our shit in a truck and drove cross country. And I knew inside, it's fine. We're totally yeah. going to have a place to live. We're totally going to have jobs. It's right. completely fine. Yeah. And my husband was freaking out. But absolutely, it all worked out. Um, 
It's yeah, it's amazing. amazing how how it all, I think all life works out. If you just give it time, it all works out. It works out faster if we get out of the way. <laughs> yes, yes. That is the work that I do with clients is that miracles happen when you get out of the freaking way. Yeah. Allow them to. Right. And trust that the universe really is intelligence and it will help because yeah. it's allowing that intelligence to come into your life. Yes. Yeah, I actually tell people you're you're more in control when you let go. Mm -hmm. when oh, I like that. I really love that. You're more yeah. in control when you let go. Yeah, you're much more in control when you let go. You wouldn't, it feels easy. It feels like this, this uncomfortable surrender, but right. you end up becoming much more a creator of your reality than you ever thought possible than ever before but yeah. when you let go and you lean into ease and you lean into that frequency that different vibration so yeah absolutely so i have a question for you yeah. if you in your today's wisdom mm -hmm. can say anything to your self before you started the fertility journey what would it be oh yeah <laughs> I started the fertility journey yes. <laughs> or as you were starting yes I was a mess um <laughs> think about the worst mess time what would you tell her <laughs> yeah I've actually written about that um it's some of most of it would be nonverbal love it would just be mm. I'm giving you a I just want to hug that girl I just yeah. want to hug her. um and and tell her everything is exactly as it needs to be pain mm -hmm. and all everything is exactly. And I like, um, I haven't read the whole course in miracles, but I like a quote from there that says, if you knew who walked beside you on this path that you've chosen, you could never feel fear again. Oh my God. And, that's beautiful. Yeah. And I absolutely subscribe to that. I would yeah. tell her that you, you, if you knew, if you knew yeah. how, beautiful you are how lovely this whole process is even as it's sucking <laughs> yeah yeah you, you couldn't feel fear again um so right i would ask her to be more in love than in fear mm, i love that it's beautiful um so for the listeners who are curious how can they find you Oh, probably the best way is through my, my podcast, Two Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast. Uh, but I obviously have a website, drmariarothenberger.com. And uh, they can get, actually, if you're interested, if listeners or watchers are interested in starting a meditation practice, um, they can sign up on my newsletter and you get a free fertility meditation kit with an ebook Ooh. and two meditations to start. So nice. Um, you can do that. Um, I'll have uh, all the links on my episode notes. So if anybody wants to go and look, it's, that's where it's going to be. Um, Dr. Maria, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> when can we meet again? No, I know, I mean, tomorrow. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, oh, just happens. Yeah, exactly. So, um, wow, this is really, really amazing. It's, it's uh, pleasantly... Well, I don't want to say pleasantly surprised. I knew that I was very intrigued by you, but it was like way more than I even expected. And I was like, well, really good. excited to talk to you, but I definitely felt a connection between us and yes. between our spirits and, and our beliefs, because mm. I think we both really subscribe to the whole empowerment thing. We sure do. Yeah. We absolutely do. We're on the same wavelength. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you know what? It is. It's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> we like sort of thing. <laughs> it is. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate it.